All right, everyone. Thank you all so much for hanging with us for three days. This was just an incredible weekend, and it could not have happened without all of you attending. It couldn't have happened without um, all of our perform performing artists, all of our panelists, and all of the Seattle Symphony Horns, you know, running a little bit of AV here and there, everyone doing their part. And I just want to thank all of you um, from the bottom of my heart. This was so much fun. Like, what a blast in this unprecedented time. We, as horn players, are a tight-knit community, and we came together and made this happen, and I learned a ton. I don't know about you guys. Anyone else want to add a little something before we do our our highs and lows? I was going to say it's great seeing uh, new young people coming through and the amazing talent that's coming. It's been, it was really exciting to see all the audition videos for all the you that submitted and, and performed. It was, yeah, it's exciting to see all that. So well done to everyone who submitted. Yeah, a huge thanks to everyone who participated and everybody who, who cheered us on along the way. Um, and I can't wait to do one of these in person, whether it's in Seattle or wherever it else is, is in the country and, uh, you know, get to shake some hands to all of these our, uh, horn playing friends out there. So thanks to everybody. Yeah, thanks a lot for everybody that submitted everything. It was some fascinating things. I learned a ton of stuff about horn playing and the people that played, the audition people that, that played and went so wonderfully, it was, it was great. It was amazing to learn about so many new pieces like whether it was in the recitals or even the competitions, there's so much horn repertoire I've never even heard of that I ordered this weekend. <laughs> so RIP to my bank account, but now I've got a lot of cool new music on the way. <laughs> so thanks to everyone who introduced really amazing repertoire over this weekend. And I will one more time, I'm going to post this in the chat. Um, if you like all of our Northwest Horn Symposium swag, I'm going to keep it up on the website for a couple more days. And then I'm going to relocate it to the Horn Hippie Media page. It, probably just the tracksuit and the hat. Um, or actually, no, I think all of this stuff that has like 2021, that's limited edition. We'll, we'll put the masks on there. We'll put the, um, you know, we're going to put... Um, the hoodie and joggers up there. So if you want to, you know, grab a piece of this swag to show up at the next in-person symposium, that'll be where you'll be able to get that. So keep an eye on the social media pages to um, just kind of keep abreast of all that information. Um, let's see. I would love to ask a quick question of everyone, uh, just a quick, like, what were the three best moments of the symposium for you, all the Seattle Symphony horns? Let's start with Danielle. Just top of the head. It can be s totally silly, can be, you know, over the top. Well, I mean, personally, I have to say our concert shook <laughs> because that was definitely uh, the most exciting thing since it was actually in person playing. Um, that was probably the best part of the symposium for me. And that's still available. If anyone missed it and you want to see it, that's still available on the Seattle Symphony Live platform for like five or six more days, I think. So you have some time to check that out. Um, that link, I think, and everything is in the program booklet and stuff like that. Um, so that was definitely a high point. Um, I, I think for me, I just could not get enough of the digital competition submissions. Like, I wish we could have just shared all of them. We just didn't have time in the recital to share them all. But I was just delighted sure. and tickled by every single one of them they were just like so creative and I'm I'm just like in awe of all of it both the playing and the creativity the all the concepts and the execution it was just so impressive so that was definitely a highlight I John is not kidding I was like furiously texting everyone like this is the best thing ever um, so I loved that category and I'm so excited that it's almost like a COVID inspired competition category that I feel like will now probably um, exist in the future. So that's exciting. Um, I really enjoyed um, Dave Bird's recital last night. It was incredible and 
he's a friend from school, like my undergrad. And so it's just so cool to sort of reunite years later and, and seeing everyone on the chat and the recitals and uh, just so many friends um, getting to just hear just like how amazing people sound, you know, having gone to school with people and like we were there studying together as kids and now to sort of see this um, incredible professional um, just everything about that was awesome and so if you haven't heard that recital it's also there um, to check out and all the recitals are available on the horn hippie media channel um, but to me those i think were my my top three things that was like more than three but whatever <laughs> super solid jenna um yeah um, Danielle stole most of mine. Um, I have to say concert took as well. That was a highlight, um, especially having an audience back in the hall and being able to stream it and having my family and friends in Australia be able to watch that as well. So that was pretty cool. Um, on that note, side note about the Seattle Symphony Live, if you all did sign up and choose not to cancel at the end of the trial period, in about three or four weeks, there will be a brass and organ concert that we recorded a month or so ago. There's some really cool repertoire on that. So if you hold on to your membership, which we encourage since it's only about $12 a month, um, you'll look out for that brass concert coming up. Um, so the concert joke was great. I also love David Bird's recital last night. I thought that was really cool to put such an amazing program of entirely solo horn together. Um, and the piece that he wrote for us, I think he wrote it, right? Um, Cascadia, that was a really cool piece. Um, and I want to make a special mention to Leander's solo. If anyone hasn't seen it yet, go and watch it. It was on the second Northwest recital, the opening of the second. Really cool piece, really great production, everything. I thought it was great. So um, yeah, that was probably my top three. Mark? I loved being able to go and listen to the Kantrstuck. That was a lot of fun. and. Um, I really enjoyed uh, the presentations of uh, Jeff Snedeker and Roger Kaza, and um, I enjoyed all, all the playing. The recitals were amazing. There's a couple I missed I have to catch up on. Um, <clears throat> but um, all, all the presentations I thought were just amazing. And being able to see that there's such a huge horn community that's so active and interesting. It's just really great. I can't. Sorry, Mark, I just muted you. I thought you were done talking. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I bad. Bye, sorry. Everybody. No. <laughs> Bye, Mark. That was awesome. I I guess I have the same ones. You know, concert Stuck, number one. Number two, probably the Sarah Willis Horn hangout on the morning after. That was hilarious. And and so much fun. And then my third thing would have to be the YouTube premiere chat. Um, it was a lot of fun to just see people interacting almost as if we were at a concert in person and sort of having that magic of being the first to see a video together. That was something that, um, that we learned uh, through the course of this process was actually quite special. And um, I know that there are a couple of IHS presenters and people that are um, also going to be putting on other symposiums. And so I'd love to take um, about 10 more minutes before the David Cooper's recital to just go over what we did this week that worked and what didn't work. Um, just from a technical perspective and Seattle Symphony Horns, feel free to jump in or add anything. Or if you got to go, jump off. Totally understandable. This is where... Um, we'll kind of get a little into the nitty gritty. Um, so of course we did all of this through um, Zoom webinars, which is a little bit different than just a regular Zoom meeting. And it has an expanded capacity for, um, we had 500 uh, and 30 or almost 600 registrants by the end, by the end of the three days. And so we didn't know how many people were going to be attending. Um, about an average of like 60 to 80 people were on Zoom at one time. So for um, all of you that are um, thinking about hosting your own Northwest or, or your own horn symposium, uh, you might only need just 100 um, member capacity in order to have this be successful. 
Um, for the International Horn Symposium, you might need a little more. So I know Tawny is on the chat, so um, that's and that might be something to keep in mind. Um, how we started, we, we started with our call, our uh, designing the website and just sort of planning out the weekend. So we got our dates in line, and then we put together the website uh, via Squarespace, via Squarespace, and then after we got the website launched and everything looked good, we um, had a call for submissions. And I want to definitely say that it was um, so. After we performed at the last Northwest Horn Symposium, um, Gina approached Jenna and myself about hosting, and we were absolutely thrilled because we thought it was going to be in person and that we would um, be performing the concert stuck and Stefan Dorr would be here playing a solo with our orchestra. So, of course, due to the pandemic, none of that transpired, but we were still able to um, have a symposium just like this happen anyway. Um, so... Once we got our website established and the call for proposals um, out, we started gaining a lot of emails. We set up a separate um, email account for the symposium, which is different than our Seattle Symphony Horns account. Um, and so we tried to just keep everything organized. We all shared the password to that and you know kept everything very organized in that um, email, that Gmail account just kind of created all these different tags you know, for featured artists, for just inquiries and miscellaneous um for scheduling for competitions for the recitals in each recital um had its own tag by the end of it so that was a way that we stayed very organized in putting that together um and then once we had all of our proposals and recital um pieces down we started collecting everything and so we set deadlines for everyone and we set a deadline for um, all of our artists to be on um, last Monday. And so that way we were able to kind of compile everything and I was able to put on like our little titles and just if, if there's anything unclear in um, people's parts or if there were volume discrepancies, we were able to bump those up. And so after we had um, just kind of gotten everything at the same level, we would export and upload to YouTube as a premiere. Now, before the symposium, we thought that we were going to be able to stream everything through Zoom. But after that first opening ceremonies, we had all these um, all these responses in the chat. And thank you, all the attendees who were there um, that said there was a lag. There was a little bit of a disconnect between the video and audio. And so immediately in that moment, we decided to just we're going to premiere everything on YouTube. So that's why we chose to instead of going every putting everything through zoom we decided to do it via youtube premieres and we made the discovery about that little chat feature on the youtube premieres which is so cool we were able to you know i love my one of my favorite parts is like the little you know give them a round of applause in the chat and it it looks like people are applauding almost it's super cool um so the week of we started collecting everything we had all the videos together and um, by the way, anyone jump in, <laughs> like if you're, you know, I'd love to talk a little bit like the recital filming was, um, kind of crazy. We, we are all, um, we were all vaccinated. Danielle is half vaccinated at that point. And we were in a, um, small ish church. So we kept our masks on when we weren't playing and, um, that process, we had two rehearsals in there and then a dress rehearsal where we had our, um, horn hippie media, um, guest uh, camera operator John De Caesar, and you saw him as a host on Friday night. He was there, masked up, and had his shoes off, walking around because it's an old church, so the floors creak. And um, he did an amazing job. So definitely a huge thank you to that. And I will get a uh, thank you to our sponsors. Another note: um, you may have received a lot of emails from Jenna Breen. Huge shout out to Jenna Breen for all of her hard work on. Um, running the organization component of the email chain and organizing. Um, that was a huge gargantuan task. And if you decide to put on a symposium like this, you need to make sure you have someone that you can delegate to do that. And also shout out to Danielle, our competition queen. She, Danielle is in charge of um, communication with all of our young artists and also in charge of dispersing um, videos and materials to all of our judges. So, um, you know, uh, most of the judging was done internally by the SSO Horns, but then for the jazz competition, 
we um, were very fortunate to have Jeff Scott and Tom Varner, local Tom Varner, to um, help judge that competition. Um, and Genghis Barbie judged the ensemble competition. Yes, how could I forget? Of course, Genghis Barbie, who we saw yesterday, judging the ensemble competition. Um, and so definitely an important component of having a successful symposium is to have someone in charge of the competitions almost exclusively. It was, it's a little bit too much for, um, for one person to balance more than the competitions because it is a lot of work to um, coordinate those and then to collect the videos from the participants in order to put them into um, a recital presentation as well. So um, after we had done all of that, we, um, oh goodness, the book. The, the booklet was a very important component that Jenna also put together. Um, just, it's a lot of info collecting and it, it's, it was a great way to help all of us stay organized actually during the symposium. Um, but that is, an, that is another key component is to have, you know, I know ours wasn't very printable because of all the colors. It would really, you know, destroy a printer, <laughs> but it was very, you know, we're very earth conscious here. So we didn't want you printing it out. We wanted you viewing it on a, on a computer screen or an iPad or phone or something. Um, and making that available the day before, I think if we could do it again, I would love to have maybe had all of that done maybe um, a week ahead of time, um, just so that people could have accessed it a little bit early and maybe gotten more familiarized. But it seemed to work out just fine in the end. And it was pretty clear um, just from on that splash page, we had all the links. We had the like link to the webinar, link to the performances and the um, downloadable program booklet that was just um we put it on google drive and made it shareable so i have one suggestion to anyone who is posting something like this going forward try to automate as much as you possibly can because when we started taking registrations there was a form on the website and i would get an email then i would copy and paste the name and email address of each registration into a spreadsheet for the first 150 or so registrations were just me copy and pasting across until we worked out that we could actually automate it so it all went into a spreadsheet. Yes. So we, we still now have to copy and paste that it's copying a lot. Yes, definitely. And that was done with Google Forms, which we also learned, um, uh, we also used that, those Google Forms for the competition entries. Um, we ended up having a little bit of an issue, a little bit of a snag with the competition entries. I think um, make sure that you test those forms because if you're asking for um, like an email address, sometimes Google Forms will like flag, it'll flag that form and you have to just like click a button that says like um, review this flag and someone at Google will probably take care of it. But I think it was just because we were asking for like names and email addresses, like I don't know, it was, there was something very weird about that and it just kind of closed the last week. So um, we had a lot of frantic students, you know, emailing me like, I can't see anything. We're just like, it was so then we immediately updated the website and just said, submit this via email if this Google form is not working. And people seem to be um, amenable to that. Um, and, and it seemed to be pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, not everybody, but. <laughs> yeah, I think we got everybody in the end. <laughs> yes, yes, I think we did. Um, and let's see. And of course, during during the symposium, like what what we did, I was actually um, uh, for all the recitals, we did put a, a couple of little titles on the recitals just um, for clarification. Um, if there was someone who submitted like multiple files that didn't have like titles before, we put that all in the program underneath and um, tried to avoid as many typos as possible. But we were doing it quickly. Um, so you may see some edits, um, in the YouTube description, um, coming up and, um, then we, we kept getting this question, will there be, um, like, will the, will the webinar be viewable after the fact? And that's a project that I'm going to be working on this week. We've, um, gotten in contact with our panelists to ask their permission to post their, uh, presentations. I, I think it's a great way to, um, 
it's just kind of like a digital time capsule of like what the horn community did during this time. And so I'm all for keeping all of this up like in perpetuity. But if you're a panelist now and you're like, Oh no, don't, don't put it up. Send us an email to the, um, the Google account. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll upload those separately. So it'll be organized by, um, by presentation. So you won't have to like think, Oh, it was day one. I have to scroll through all this stuff. It'll just be, you know, pretty clear. Um, but that might take me a day or two. So if you're just, if you're just logging on, welcome to the, <laughs> the closing ceremonies. Um, then I, I think, oh yeah, Gina Gilly. Oh my goodness. Gina, thank you for all your help too at the start. I definitely want to thank Gina. I want to thank Lydia Van Driel, um, and Jeff Snedeker, of course, Jeff Snedeker, the OG, and also Jonas, um, from the Northeast uh, horn workshop. I actually spoke, I, I got on a zoom with him and I was like, okay, what are you doing? Like, how are you doing this? And they had a very successful Northeast horn workshop a couple of weeks ago. Um, and all, a lot of our model was kind of based off of, um, a lot of what they did, particularly their, um, their YouTube, like their streaming instead of doing it on the, you know, on the zoom, like I logged in on like one of the days and it just had, you know, head over to the YouTube page and watch the recital. And it was a pretty clear, easy thing to um, to follow. And most people that are getting on Zoom, you know, there's multiple windows going. You can easily get on YouTube. It's not too too challenging. Um, but, and also if, if you guys have any Q&A questions, any final Q&As, we got about 10 minutes before this recital starts, but drop those questions. Happy to answer anything, everything, any comments, anything we could do better, of course. would love to hear just so that we all learn how to you know, make this medium work while we still are using it. I just have to give the biggest shout out to JT for oh, an unbelievable you. and immense amount of work. I don't know if anyone could ever comprehend the amount of work that John has done for this symposium. And he, he really helped a lot of us out. Um, by carrying a lot of that weight. He does deadlift as you I do. learned from Sarah Willis to hang out, but, <laughs> but he really he heavily lifted. And and he, it's, he's also just so skilled at these things. Like we're so lucky. We never could have hosted this symposium on the budget. <laughs> <that we did laughs> yeah, our budget. Without these talents that everyone brought to the table and, and all the time that everyone invested in it. And also everyone who contributed the the, the um, recordings people submitted and um, the recitals and things that people contributed to just really helped make the symposium. But I mean, JT did all the video recording, all the video editing, <laughs> all the sound editing, and hosted almost this entire symposium. <laughs> so we just have to give him the biggest round of applause ever for all that amazing work. <laughs> Felt like that's difficult or you think copies what the concert stuck as well oh yeah that too oh my gosh i forgot about the concert stuck like <laughs> it was so long ago it was so long ago I, I watched it um before the before yesterday morning and i was like oh, you guys we sounded so great that was amazing oh love playing with you guys and mark was right there i was making eye contact with mark the whole time You'll see me, like, if you go back and you watch, you can, like, see me, like, when I make eye contact with Mark, I'm like. I can see Mark. Where were you? Like, dead center. Like, right in, right in the orchestra center. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't looking at anyone. <laughs> but, yeah, this was amazing. We had such a good time. And I'm just, I'm amazed at all the skills that this section has and just all the the ways that this came together and, and the Northwest Horn Society and, and our horn community. It's just been really fun to oh, see it all come together. Yes, Danielle, that reminds me to thank our sponsors. Oh, we got a question from Lydia in the, ch in the Q&A. Who designed the hoodie and jogger pants? That's your boy. That's me. Um, I based this oh, like design. <laughs> well, also, you know, it, it's just, you know, I'm on the software. I know what a PNG file is and um, it was, and Lydia, you actually said, Hey, go to Printful. They have like really high quality stuff and they, um, it's pretty sustainable compared to you know, places like custom ink because they can do, um, orders just on demand. And we didn't know how, how popular these items would be. 
Um, and also they handle Printful also will handle your shipping if you can set it up with your Squarespace site. And so if you caught, you know, the yesterday, the talk with Kate Caliendo, um, I asked her a question, you know, how are you setting like, is, did she automate, um, you know, her books to go out and like someone like prints them and ships them, but she does it herself, which like we could have done, we could have ordered a bunch of things and, but we would have had a lot left over, or we could have just gone through Printful and had them, um, you just do the like make what is it like it's made to order essentially and so it's a little bit less wasteful um and yes oh okay quickly let me just go ahead and thank our sponsors gonna um throw up the ads one last time y'all one last you know one more time gonna celebrate moon oh yeah right that's not the dancing okay um that didn't work <laughs> All right, so huge shout out, of course, to our uh, friends at the Northwest Horn Society. If you are not already a member, you better get over there and join. Come on, what are you waiting for? Amazing. Um, also, let's see. Oh, gosh, PowerPoint. Why are you doing this to me? Oh, yeah, another thing about PowerPoint. So that's how we did these ad cards. Um, made a PowerPoint presentation with our funky, fresh background and um, just kind of duplicated slides for the welcome to this, you know, this um, titles. And we also made a Spotify playlist to uh, share sound with, which is um, also, I'll, that's going to be up in perpetuity if you guys want to check this one out. Um, can y'all still see, y'all? Yeah, you can still see my screen. So anyway, in PowerPoint, to make a PowerPoint go, <laughs> like you have to like set it up the show and all the do all these like custom settings so that you don't have to worry about it sometimes you may have noticed it will it was stalling on an ad anyway okay second sponsor seattle sound repair marie amazing horn repair goddess we all take all of our instruments to her and she does amazing work and was one of our usually actually the first sponsor of the northwest horn symposium so thank you marie and all the team at seattle sound repair our next sponsor is, of course, the International Horn Society. Thank you, everyone at IHS. And don't forget to sign up for the International Horn Symposium coming up August 9th through August 14th, 2021. Um, there will be more information about that coming out shortly. And, of course, we'll be posting that on our socials as well. Huge shout out to the OG Jeff Snedeker. Um, he has... Uh, apart from being a professor, he is an amazing recording artist and uh, an amazing natural, modern natural horn recording artist. And Jeff, you better send me the PDFs to those pieces because I want to play them so bad right now. After hearing, um, I hadn't actually heard um, that the Woodlands piece until today, and I, it was like it played perfectly. It was it was serendipitous. It played right before the yoga session, like the seconds this slow, just kind of like or, you know, noise ensemble um, piece for natural horn. And it was oh, beautiful. And then of course we have <clears throat> Andrew Clark at Clark Brass Instruments, one of our sponsors um, in um, Canada. You know, that Canada counts as the Pacific Northwest. So super happy to have him on board. Um, Josh Paulus, one of our um, amazing uh, substitute horn players here is now a an expert realtor with an office just around the around the way here in Capitol Hill. If you are looking for a house, you better hit up Josh because he knows he knows what he's doing. Um, the next, of course, we have <clears throat> excuse me, Chris Wiggins of C D Wiggins Music. Um, great collection of sheet music here. We got solos, duets, trios, quartets, large horn ensemble works here. Um, super thankful to him and his support of the symposium. And last, we actually, um, this is an idea from David Cooper. Um, the Metropolitan Opera musicians are uh, in a bit of a, a tight spot. I'm sure most of you know if you're on social media. Um, we posted a couple times on our um, Symphony Horn story about uh, this story. But um, if you do have the spare um, funds to donate and contribute to their um their uh, their nonprofit, you can absolutely follow that link and we encourage it. And David wanted us to play this message before his recital, which you will see in three minutes. Um, and I think it's a really uh, a really nice message and a really good gesture um, from the horn community to show our support of those musicians in New York. 
And let's see, is that it? Is that everyone? Yes, save changes. <laughs> and if you need, if you want access to any of this information, just send, um, send us an email on, um, you know, especially if you're a coordinator for, oh goodness, let me stop the share. Um, if you're a coordinator for a, a symposium, feel free to send us a, um, um, an email or, you know, shoot us an, a message on one of the socials and we'll, um, be happy to share any of this information. If you, if you'd like it to reference Mark, Danielle, anything? Well, let's go watch this recital, y'all. Awesome, awesome stuff. So happy you guys all joined and um, you all made this a success. So, mwah, mwah. Bravi, Thank bravi you tutti. for being here, for making this what it was. Bye, everyone. I'm just going to, you know, I'll put the playlist up here and just going to put that link to, you know, go to YouTube and I'm going to hop on that chat. See you guys over there. All right, sorry, this is a little loud, everyone. I'm just going, I'm gonna watch this on my main computer instead of watching on my phone. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, come on. Here. Oh. oh, I need to throw this in the chat, actually. Don't worry. Oh, Daniel, you already got it. Thank you. <laughs> 